Mike Gill has exposed the crime of the century with rock-solid hard evidence. Huge drug and money laundering rings in New Hampshire involving all levels of government and private enterprise. The use of his information by the Trump campaign to gain political leverage, not protect children from predators and drugs, is unforgivable. I hope they've got some explaining ready to go. James O'Keefe and Project Veritas bearing the case and now he is running from what he and Project Veritas has done. The chickens are coming home to roost and the usual suspects are completely silent on the issue. This is a 2022 video on James O'Keefe and IIA operations, online interactive internet activities or online psychological warfare as exposed by Patrick Berge and the great documentary Shadowgate by Millie Weaver and Gavin Wintz. These patriots are currently very silent as Mike Gill continues to suffer the loss of his family, vast fortune, dignity and health and safety. We are one step closer to understanding the vile and greedy online controlled antics of those contrived private intelligence run channels and fake heroes. It's time to recognize Mike Gill for the hero he is and say once and for all, these IIA crisis actors with their limited hangout shock reaction channels must tell the truth or they will reap an eventual whirlwind. Please enjoy this expose on IIA operations and James O'Keefe. Hola, Internet Amigos. We'll be digging into the Kenosha Kid, James O'Keefe and Patrick Berge. Now don't fret, it's not going to be that bad. Now, this is a quickie. So much is happening. Bill and the gang are warning of bio-warfare and weaponized smallpox, and we'll get into that in a video soon, and where someone might be manufacturing that potential material. We'll wind up the video with a quick commentary on the Kyle Rittenhouse acquittal, truly a gift from above. But first, a word from the Samson option himself, Booby. In cyber, and cyber is a real domain of power. In cyber, and cyber is a real domain of power. Introduction. The military has a name for fake news. It's called IIA Operations, Interactive Internet Activities. The military uses Interactive Internet Activities, or IIA, as the psychological operations nomenclature for a tactical social media warfare program. Department of Defense Information Operations Joint Publications 3-12.2 Psychological Operations dated the 7th of January 2010. It defines interactive internet activities as follows. A. Psychological Operations and Computer Network Operations. CNO supports PSYOP with dissemination assets to include interactive internet activities. CNO activities can deny or degrade an adversary's ability to access, report, and process information. This capability supports PSYOP by providing access to digital media within the information environment to reach intended targets. When you watch Alex Jones, when you watch David Icke, when you watch Nick Fuentes, when you watch Tucker Carlson, when you watch CNN, when you watch Joe Rogan, when you watch Timcast, IRL, when you watch any social media influencer of any status, always in your mind must be the concept of IIA operations. Limited release or limited hangout, controlled release, suppression, containment, redirection, misdirection of information into meaningless manufactured online issues, arguments and circular dead ends that exhaust and confuse. The aim? To never allow diverse meaningful information to become direct meaningful political power and movements at the grassroots level that have concrete effects in the public domain. You are in a contrived right versus left banker funder dialectic. When you are exhausted, beaten and crying out for certainty and freedom from fear and anxiety, the final solution will be offered you. End of introduction. Perhaps you can understand Kyle Rittenhouse, James O'Keefe and Patrick Berge. Now, don't be too afraid. I'm not going to be that harsh, or maybe I will be to some, at least in appearance. 
I just want you to think a little bit about what you're willing to accept from larger, well-funded and well-produced online media stars like O'Keefe and how the mainstream media accepted the gift of Rittenhouse and other pleasant distractions. And man, Rittenhouse was truly an organic gift. Change the story, change the lead. It's not a new concept. Change the story, change the lead. It's not a new concept. Of course, the mainstream and the big media channels weren't the only ones. I mean, the old alt media, they're in it as well. They always are, because they're exactly the same as the mainstream media, apart from obscure, frequently deleted channels and sites. They're all controlled by the same NATO marine psych warfare operation run out of a private data analytic company like Denology and Clearforce, to name just a few. These work in tandem with private security contractor teams playing crisis actor, LARPA and Johnny on the Spot witness for critical events. There are vast pools of registered out-of-work actors and gophers recruited in the same vein as a criminal informant for police operations. Many, but not all of these people, are literally registered pedophiles, drug dealers and users for the real dirty jobs. I mean, think story time and the disgusting, disgusting story pushed by the mainstream media of how quickly we forgot that. And I still wonder where that kid is right now. This is all an expendable workforce, just as the East German Stasi recruited and maintained its rat lines, and I mean, most of them were literally rats, of street information and gang stalking teams. These are IIA operations or Internet interactive activities as set up in Iraq and Afghanistan, aka military psychological warfare operations. They've been around for centuries, obviously, but now it is an absolute science applied writ large directly to multiple avenues of information flow, from the so-called mainstream to the so-called alt media and everything in between, including myself. We are all part of this system. We are all in the pool they can draw from, puff up, delete, suppress, and use as they wilt when the data analytics indicate short, medium, and long-term requirements for information, limited release, controlled release, or outright suppression and deletion. This is large-scale, and I mean f***ing large-scale, military intelligence-based psychological warfare designed and applied to the enemies of the United States overseas and now brought home privatized, but still run by the same military personnel in private subcontractor form. This is the Wall Street East India Trading Company private army and intelligence network running around the United States and elsewhere under the guise of free enterprise. This is what John Fitzgerald Kennedy sought to end by breaking the Wall Street CIA union, quote, into a thousand pieces and handing over all overseas covert operations into the hands of the U.S. military and plausible government oversight, to some degree. This move directly broke the East India-UK-EU banking cartel grip on the United States military and intelligence apparatus power machine. And we know what happened next via the Israeli kill team. Ross Dow and Kissinger never looked so happy with Lyndon Johnson post-Kennedy killing, did they? Happy, happy little chappies. But that was, um, that was... Walt Whitman Rostow and his crowd. And he's a very dangerous man. Because Walt Whitman Rostow is a communist. Okay, and in what capacity is he? Oh, he was one of the wise men in Kennedy's administration. I think he was probably responsible for the movement that got Kennedy murdered. I believe it was an Israeli group which did it with some of these rogues. The continued in-your-face long-term privatization or corporatization of the ultimate power method of coercion, i.e. killing, this thereby avoided any and all public scrutiny that would be afforded via government departments and strict regulations and guidelines, and the transparency afforded via the US Senate and Congress, and above all, freedom of information legislation. Finally topped off uh, in our dreams with an engaged and interested citizenry demanding personal and government accountability. But the aforementioned methods combined with good old-fashioned blackmail and bribery, the system of control was embedded and grows more powerful daily, literally every day, every single day, sucking the life from the body politic before our eyes and we sit and do absolutely f***ing nothing. 
This is the old British Empire Union of Queen Victoria and the UK European Rothschild Banking Cartel. The East India Trading Company and its present internationalist right and left arm, the Henry Kissinger and George Soros networks, to name but a few. But they're our poster boys. That union was always very shaky, which is why you see the royals getting such bad press and always finding their little scandals well reported. Just like the Catholic Church and the Vatican. They're so powerful, they can't keep their scandals out of the press. I mean, think about it. Sideline. Which power group could you never talk about, except very recently, in panting, gasping, well received by the emperor with no clothes? So if you criticise, you better suck all heavily along the way. Is there any other group you have to do that with? Any? Who has the power? Yeah, now you're getting it. Now, Patrick Berge and the Millie Weaver, Gavin Wintz team, and Shadowgate highlighted and brought this very important and specific truth to us two years ago. And, um, what the f*** has changed? Superficially, f*** all. There is zero, and I mean zero, self-evident behavioural change online with the information provided. I went to the University of Illinois for military history. So by trade, I'm actually a historian. Following graduating from the University of Illinois, I went to Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, where I studied museum administration. So I ended up graduating with my Master's of Public Administration, and that's when I went into ROTC. So I commissioned with my Master's degree in 2012. Especially with me studying history, I had no idea how relevant putting history into cyber would actually relate. So what I do a lot of the time is I'm actually tracking our threats. So what's going on in the news and politics today has everything to do with what cyber operations are actually taking place. And so I'm telling the team what's going on so we know what to be on the lookout for as we're conducting our cyber operations from day to day. Everything you see is a stage managed or co-opted natural event designed to delete, suppress, channel, divert, and misdirect human energies, thoughts, behaviors, and actions that would threaten the status quo, i.e. bankers and their plans for a psychologically battered peasantry. The underlying aim, Sarkov said, was not to win the war, but to use the conflict to create a constant state of destabilized perception in order to manage and control. That is suitably conditioned for compliant, placid herd behavior a la CCP China, ready to be herded into the electrified pen of the UN Habitat Smart Cities program, where, if they're feeling benevolent, you'll be slowly added into sterility and placidity and die alone with your virtual reality goggles on and free high-speed internet in your 200-foot square closet apartment. And if we're really good cattle and we have a good social contract score, we might get a sex robot and Alex Jones will be lining up for all the extra features, won't you, Alex? Just like the rest of you, denology, military intel, whore opinions for sale. In the past, when you stepped out of line and opened your mouth a bit too big and perhaps gained an audience, you were killed via heart attack, stroke, home invasion gone bad to steal your TV, or a head-on with a truck. If you were in Central or South America, the Kissinger kill teams called you a communist and simply shot you in the head and dumped you in the street, or chopped you up and put you in a vat of acid with the local Catholic priests and nuns, a la 1980s Central America. In the civilized so-called West, they criticize, marginalize, then criminalize. I know this little technique very well. They'll find kitty porn in your Gmail account, find an old girlfriend from 30 years ago to accuse you of rape, clear force, the military-based private security contractor posing as a private corporation, digs through your social media posts and finds a crass comment made when drunk at the office Christmas party from, you know, 10 years ago and sends it to your potential employer. Or, Clear Force and all the privatized military corporations like them provide an upfront dossier to the Human Resource Department where you have applied for work and you are politely told to go get a job in Idaho. If you're lucky. The Francis Stoner book and lecture on the CIA culture war says it all in the previous incarnation of this program. In this brilliant and relatively short online lecture, she describes the intelligence-connected Wall Street funding of books, movies, TV series, conferences, magazines, artists, poets, painters, musicians, all ostensibly done to win the cultural Cold War, a worthy goal to be sure. 
and everyone was doing this, all sides. But now the enemy is not a banker-funded enemy of the weak, tyrannical system in Eurasia. The enemy is now us. And just who did win that Cold War? Maybe Anatoly Galitsyn, in his book New Lies for Old, warning of the comeback of this system, ain't so wrong after all. And we'll really have to revisit McCarthy and the so-called Red Scare. He wasn't so wrong after all. And we have to revisit James Angleton. It usually takes a national crisis or a Pearl Harbor for people then understand what survival means. But you don't have to be a great or large or wealthy country to have a good intelligence service. As long as you have the norms, as long as you have the disciplines, as long as you have the motivation, the singleness of purpose, you can be a small service, have one great penetration, and you can move the world. They claimed he was an anachronism, totally infatuated with Soviet Russia, but I don't think he was wrong. He was bang on. He was just very wrong about that other country called Israel. And if Kennedy was naive about the Soviet Union, James Angleton was very naive about Israel. A shame they couldn't have met in the middle. Regardless. So a good place to start on this deep and dangerous issue is that Francis Stoner Saunders lecture and book. You'll see that way before Shadowgate, You'll see just how deep it went back then, and then you will grasp at their power and reach and control now. And they want you to. They want you to gasp, be overwhelmed at the depth of the deceptive layers, the endless line of dupes, gullible fools, attention-seeking narcissists, and paid-for whores that do the dirty work in the information warfare great game online and off. We must, on the one hand, not be naive, But we must also not be totally cynical and belligerent, running around calling everyone who disagrees with us a shill and Hasbara operation. They love it when we do that too. Remember, it's all about the dialectical polar opposites. Energize and polarize. Take it to both extremes. Never a middle ground where people could talk. So we must be aware and understand the lie is a great sprinter, but a terrible marathon runner. And this fight is a marathon. We just have to see it out. Now, with that intro out of the way, with regards O'Keefe and Berge, I like both of them, Berge and O'Keefe, superficially, meaning prima facie, at first glance, I don't get a bad vibe off them, unlike an Alex Jones, Joe Rogan, David Icke, and a dozen other Kissinger and Associates related internet stars. If you didn't know, Goldman Sachs and right-hand man of Dr. Henry Kissinger, Dr. Steve Pachenik, is the center point of that whole crew. And we'll get back to the details of that in another video. But I urge you to watch the Rats in the Rank series linked below. Roughly three hours. Three one-hour part series. You need to watch Rats in the Ranks. So what's the problem with James O'Keefe? The latest video from Project Veritas is, as usual, groundbreaking. In that, like Snowden, it starkly confirms what we already very well know. News media is out now propaganda. Fancy that. <laughs> that you're now teaching journalists at a, at a national level, don't be objective. And to me, that was what journalism always was, to, to be objective. And in my mind, if it's not, if journalism is not objective, it's not journalism, it's propaganda. Question I have for you is this. Why is James O'Keefe taking us only thus far and no further? There are two levels to this question. Let me explain this shallow and quick dive, and I repeat, I do not want O'Keefe gone. I want you to demand he go deeper. I like his stuff. I don't want to see it gone away. Now, O'Keefe goes into a specific media conglomerate in the video, Tegna Inc. It was created in 2015 when Gannett Company was split into two. Quote, Tegna Inc. is an American publicly traded broadcast digital media and marketing services company. Headquartered in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, it was created on June 29, 2015, when the Gannett Company split into two publicly traded companies. Tegna comprised the more profitable broadcast television and digital media divisions of the old Gannett, while Gannett's publishing interests were spun off as a new company that retained the Gannett name. Tegna owns or operates 
66 television stations in 54 markets and holds properties in digital media. Quote, Gannett Co. Incorporated is an American mass media holding company headquartered in McLean, Virginia, in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Of course it is. It is the largest U.S. newspaper publisher as measured by total daily circulation. Hmm. Remember, it's the largest U.S. newspaper publisher as measured by total daily circulation. Interesting. That's Gannett Company. Interestingly, they are being sued for allegedly enabling the sexual abuse of paperboys. Seems pretty standard expose these days, doesn't it? Now, they're based in the usual place. Quote, Tyson's, also known as Tyson's Corner, is a census-designated place, or CDP, and unincorporated community in Fairfax County, Virginia, United States, located in northern Virginia between the community of McLean and the town of Vienna along the Capitol Beltway. It lies within the Washington metropolitan area. Tyson's is home to two super-regional shopping malls, Tyson's Corner Center and Tyson's Galleria, and the corporate headquarters of numerous companies, such as Alarm.com, Booz Allen Hamilton, you know, that Snowden's old company, Capital One, DXC Technology, Freddie Mac, Gannett, Hilton Worldwide, Intelsat, very interesting, and Tegna. Now, what else is in Northern Virginia? Hmm, Virginia, Virginia, rings a bell, Northern Virginia. Oh, there's something there, I just, I just can't remember. Longly, I, I, I can't recall. Anyway, a five-minute superficial online search of Tegna should show the practiced eye exactly who Tegna Media is, especially with the information provided superficially at the start of this video. The same people who funded Facebook, Twitter, Google, all of them, if it's information based in gathering and or dissemination of information, and they're big, there they are. The merging of government and big business, Wall Street and the City of London. I think they call it in the olden days, uh, what was that word? Um, fascism. But really, it's just centralized command and control, a.k.a. tyranny. And that's about as un-American as you can get. As Tegna was in deep trouble several times, including over the COVID lockdown period, which was the plan, I guess their move into, quote, diversity training is part of the banker bailout deal. So with this brief, literally over my morning coffee foray into Tegna, I want to ask a question of both James O'Keefe and Patrick Berge. Why do you both do what you do? Why does James O'Keefe never mention General Jim Jones, Denology, Clearforce, and above all, the superficial but very important work of Berge, Millie Weaver, and Gavin Wintz, i.e. Shadowgate? They are a core issue in understanding how news media became out and out, highly coordinated, dialectical, polarizing propaganda with two stark sides you can join in the banker dialectic dance. Now, that's a good meme. Think about it. The BDD, the Banker Dialectic Dance, a highly coordinated, seductive dance. Everyone in line, moving to the beat of the banker music. In particular, Clearforce, which has every major network as a client, checking backgrounds of staff for a, you know, suitable attitude. The correct internalization of values as a Noam Chomsky would say. And listen, I can't stand Professor Noam Chomsky. Nonetheless, he has incredible information you must read. If you're going to read just one thing of Chomsky, you must read and watch the documentary, The Manufacture of Consent. I repeat, Chomsky makes me sick. I'm sick of his idiotic, senile attitudes in his old age. I mean, he's just gotten completely ridiculous. But if God put him on the earth for one thing, it was the groundbreaking book and documentary, the Manufacture of Consent. You must read and watch it. He's bang on. These companies are all about psychological profiling, whether it's mainstream reporters or so-called alt-reporters or the errant Edward Snowdens of the world. Patrick Berge et al. went deep into their operations, along the way exposing Roger Stone and his close relationship to the head of Denology, Jim Jones, son of NATO Marine head, psychological warfare general Jim Jones. Shit gets deeper. Roger Stone and Paul Manafort, via Manafort's company, 3EDC LLC, were working closely 
with NATO Marine Psychological Warfare. Now, you think about that. You think about Roger Stone and just who he is and how he plays all sides. Patrick Berge dropped an absolute bombshell when he outed that on Alex Jones in late 2020. Explain it, because it doesn't hurt my feelings. Explain why you wouldn't come here first. The, I mean, the, the, I'm the pioneer of, of IIA, basically social media fake news. The last place that I'm going to go is a uh, organization called Information Warfare, right? So our number one partner, and this is 2008, 2009, 2010, our number one partner. Hell, we were McCain's IT security company and social media company during the 08 primary. We were replaced in a subprime shift with Paul Manafort and Roger Stone, right? So your partner is someone who was direct, who who is close personal friends to my boss, Jim Jones, his dad, General James Jones, and Dynology, the company I worked for, when I'm helping them make these flyers, didn't have any salespeople. And three EVs. But explain that to people product. because I know that General Jones was involved consulting Trump early on. Mm -hmm. I know he has some you know, involvement with Stone goes around and works with all these groups. Stone goes around and works with all these groups. It was incredible. Barely anyone barely remembers it. And Roger Stone is still running around like nothing's happened. It's unbelievable. This is what I mean. Nothing's changed. We get all this information and we're still clueless. It goes in one ear and out the other. Now we're watching the latest, you know, change the lead, change the story. It's not a new concept. Change the story, change the lead. It's not a new concept. Change the story, change the lead. It's not a new concept. I mean, O'Keefe, James O'Keefe has zero. And I mean zero to say on this. You can't do that accidentally. And please, I've watched pretty much all this stuff on a pretty routine basis. If I've missed it, please let me know. This is James O'Keefe's issue. He needs to round it off. He needs to put the icing on the cake. We need the whole story. He's not doing it because he won't do it. He refuses to do it. I know that he knows the Shadowgate series. I know that he knows all about Israel, etc., etc., etc. Et so how long will these people be lauded before they are hated? We need the full story, the big picture, and we need it right now. It should be no surprise to anyone that if they have a crowd in tow, they will be omitting two things, that centrality of bankers and the centrality of Israel and every plot, every fake news, every false flag, every time. The whole issue has been turned into a right versus left issue. Or it will be a gay versus straight issue. Or Jew versus Gentile issue. Or man versus woman issue. Or black versus white issue. Fat versus skinny issue. Non-binary self-identifying bunny from Mars versus the ones from Venus. Anything but bankers and their bad habits. Every war is a banker war. And I repeat, the centrality of bankers and Israel. So bone tossing does not count. Urban dictionary meaning. Toss someone a bone. To attempt to appease or placate someone by giving them something trivial or of minor importance. Example, quote, My younger brother is always pleading for me to help his career. So I tossed him a bone and got him a gig in some bar at the edge of town, end quote. Or in my example of usage, quote, My vast and more naive captive audience has a small vocal element always pleading for me to include Israel and bankers in my analysis. So I tossed them a bone and mentioned once in a while the issue on an extremely superficial level, infrequently, in the hope they forget about its centrality in the never-ending fake and manufactured destructive news cycle until the bankers can lock them all up in a smart city prison. End quote. How'd you like that one? How do you like them apples? How long? How long, Lord? How long will we put up with James O'Keefe keeping vital issues contained in a right versus left paradigm? It has to stop. We know who works that psych warfare dialectical angle, don't we? So we must conclude that the very smart, very politically astute James O'Keefe and the people that surround him are working for the enemy. Or do we continue to make stupid excuses for them at this late stage of the game? I mean, I am not really sure just how much time we actually have to sort this out. Are you? Maybe it's a long time, possibly. But do you want to find that out? Now, will I be throwing out James O'Keefe and never watching him again? Locking myself up in my walled-off castle tower, pointing fingers from on high at those in the battle below, in the mud, in the heat, in the wet? No. I will continue to watch and observe and hope that they are simply running a narrative they feel will get them the most mileage in very interesting 
and controlling times. But I take notes, and if I was in the United States, I would be making lists of those who've been naughty and those who have been nice, and I would be making sure if you want to be a privatized military security contractor, social media influencer, star slash whore, there is a stark reminder from history that will come again. The brilliant German movie The Lives of Others was released in 2006. The film superbly explains what happened in Stasi-controlled East Germany during the Cold War in the 1980s. No conversation was private, no meeting was clandestine, and they had one one hundredth the technology of today. Some of the scenes are absolutely brilliant, wiring up an apartment for sound. By the end of the film, with the day-to-day human tragedy exhausted, the Stasi files are captured and made available to the public post-collapse of the wall and the Soviet Union. And what was found? One third of the East German adult population was a bought and paid for registered Stasi informer. Another one third of the East German adult population was an informal off the books informant for the state. So two thirds of the East German population was informing on each other. Think about that. One day when this is all settled and the bankers are not in a place they are used to, we will get a hold of all the data they have nicely collated for us. And we will know who was a willing enabler of the building totalitarian privatised Hunger Games UN Habitat city-state. We will know who was coerced. We will know who was paid and who claims post-battle they were in the thick of it when in fact they were just a whiny little demoralising coward. We will know. As a side note, you may remember the infamous Holocaust denier Dr Frederick Tobin. Do you know the name of one of his best friends? Peter Brockschmidt. And who was Peter Brockschmidt? Well, Peter Brockschmidt was a German, and he worked East German Warsaw Pact counterintelligence, military counterintelligence. And do you know where Peter Brockschmidt went after the war fell? Well, he went and joined the Israeli Defense Force because he was German and qualified as Jewish. And you know where he worked in Israel? Israeli military intelligence, counterintelligence. And he ends up in Adelaide, South Australia, very close to Dr. Frederick Tobin. I met him. Look, he seemed an all right guy, but I just find that a very interesting side note. As so many of the East German Stasi apparatus, you know where they ended up? They ended up in Israel. Fancy that. So, James O'Keefe, I urge you, please, I love your work, but think past the immediate gratification of the safe and warm ghetto walls you have around you and think how history will judge you. At least think at that level. How will long-term history judge you. And Patrick Berge, as you push lizard man David Icke videos while berating his business partner Alex Jones, we notice. You need to make sense, buddy. And Patrick Berge, throwing away the credibility you could have had by hanging out with Tor, a cutard enabler of idiotic groundless garbage, think about how you would be judged by history. You wonder why people won't take you seriously, Patrick? Seriously? Quoting David Icke? Patrick, the word Israel has not crossed your lips publicly. Why is that? Have I missed it? It's possible I missed it. If so, please point it out. Somebody. In private conversations, you let it all hang out. You praise me, but you have never, ever, ever mentioned my name nor pushed the excellent videos I produced on core vital issues to your audience. Did I miss it? Again, if I did, point it out to me, someone. But you go on that tour... And you won't mention my name or promote the excellent videos I've made? Why is that? What, just being seen with me is safe? Why or how is that possible? Why does Zach the Google whistleblower praise my videos and the overall work I've done, but again, never mention my name, never mention the videos? Why does he want to be seen with me and talk about his new online platform, which is brilliant, by the way, wait for it to come out, it's pretty groovy, but he does not want to talk about Israel. He literally said that to me. Doesn't want to talk about Israel. He owes something to James O'Keefe. I'm sorry, I don't get it. It's like, and this is an extreme metaphor I'm about to make here, but I want to make a point. Listen, this is like wanting to chat with Adolf Hitler, but you tell Adolf not to mention the war. It might look bad. Now, I don't think that's going to protect you in any way, nor cover some agreement you have with James O'Keefe, as you intimated, or in fact, you outright said. If you're going to be seen with me to talk about your social media platform, not talking about Israel ain't going to cover your butt. Please, Zach, you're a genius. I like the work you've done. People have said things about you. I just see that as idle gossip. But I think my ass kissing in private, I've had enough. You don't have to talk to me. Just promote the videos I've made, particularly five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 17, 18, and 39, to name a few. They're all in one single playlist, linked below. The must-watch playlist. I tell you what, Patrick Berge, I tell you what, Zach, the Google whistleblower, don't mention my damn name then, but promote the videos and promote that playlist, the must-watch playlist. Why don't you just do that? All of you, think about how you're going to be judged by history. Or is someone in your ear, someone closely associated with military intelligence, the same people that told me in Australia, please, Brendan, quote, these things are handled quietly. Yeah, well, we hope so. But I'm not taking any chances. History in the immediate and long term will judge anyone who kisses my ass in private and will not push the excellent videos I've made on Israel, Russia, China, and U.S. critical infrastructure, including core coding of Microsoft products in Israel and hardware manufacture and design in Israel, like Intel Corporation. Why have none of you ever seen fit to encourage political action by pushing the excellent video 8, A Few Good Jews, where American Jewish activist Jeremy Roth Cushel ambushes Democratic presidential hopefuls on the streets of Iowa with regards Israel and the Pentagon cloud contract, with Microsoft, based in Israel. Senator Sanders, the uh, issue of the Jedi cloud, the Pentagon being compromised by Israeli yeah. intelligence. Thank you. Uh, have you looked into that? Do you, do you know that Microsoft is okay. basically... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse okay, me. this is a key issue. Though. When okay. are we going to yeah. talk about this? That video should have one million views. No one with an audience pushes it ever. Think about it. And it's not just good information. It shows an American Jewish activist speaking out. We must have more Jews doing the core work. You must be front and center. This will work well on multiple levels. It will protect Jewish communities from further anti-Semitism, increases in anti-Semitism, or allegations of covering for Israel. Man, this video covers so many issues so well. It's brilliant. And look at it languishing there. This is a joke. That video should literally have one million views. It encourages people to lobby politically as well. No one gives a flying f**k. And I am sick of it. So I don't understand. Just being seen with me is safe because the Donology online ghetto means you can mix with multiple demographics as they never cross paths in the online ether. You can tell or infer to your audience is what they want to hear, and nothing crosses over the data analytics blood-brain barrier. Is that right? Is this how this works? Well, that is apparently how it works. Patrick Berge explained that to me. That's the point. Adam Curtis explained it to us in Hypernormalization, a documentary you must watch. You're not reaching other people. You're in an echo chamber talking to your friends. But then a technologist emerged who went much further and his ideas would become central to Putin's grip on power. He was called Vladislav Surkov. Surkov came originally from the theatre world, and those who have studied his career say that what he did was take avant-garde ideas from the theatre and bring them into the heart of politics. Surkov's aim was not just to manipulate people, but to go deeper and play with and undermine their very perception of the world so they are never sure what is really happening. Surkov turned Russian politics into a bewildering, constantly changing piece of theatre. He used Kremlin money to sponsor all kinds of groups, from mass anti-fascist youth organisations to the very opposite, neo-Nazi skinheads. and liberal human rights groups who then attacked the government. Surkov even backed whole political parties that were opposed to President Putin. But the key thing was that Surkov then let it be known that this was what he was doing, which meant that no one was sure what was real or what was fake in modern Russia. As one journalist put it, it's a strategy of power that keeps any opposition constantly confused a ceaseless shape-shifting that is unstoppable because it is indefinable. 
Meanwhile, real power was elsewhere, hidden away behind the stage, exercised without anyone seeing it. And then the same thing seemed to start happening in the West. The Liberals were outraged by Trump, but they expressed their anger in cyberspace, so it had no effect, because the algorithms made sure that they only spoke to people who already agreed with them. The underlying aim, Sarkov said, was not to win the war, but to use the conflict to create a constant state of destabilized perception in order to manage and control. Everyone is separate and compartmentalized, their demographics are mapped, and they are running frantically in infinite directions at once. There is no fist, just an open-handed brush across the face of the online and offline information beast. It's a tickle. It's not a right hook. Patrick, when it comes to pass that you knew about Microsoft and Intel basing themselves in Israel, a hostile foreign power in bed with the enemies of the United States, and you, an IT guy, say nothing to your audience, what will history say? Well, maybe what would the FBI say? Because 2022 may well be the year of the big out. It seems, at least anecdotally, with every move towards a deeper, large audience understanding of Israel as a cyber technology juggernaut, we get another COVID variant or news from the vaxxer pedophile Bill Gates that bioterror is on the horizon. This is eerily and scarily reminding of the pre-event run-up to that event from uh, some 20 years ago. Remember that one? And just as Vladislav Surkov gave it all away quite deliberately, showing that Putin's backers, Kissinger, was funding all sides in the political debate in Russia, and then they let everyone know. Is that what Shadowgate was? The revelation of the method? Our Vladislav Surkov stage play curtain drop moment? I'll repeat the words attributed to Boris Berevovsky in commentary on his falling out with Vladimir Putin and the Kissinger intel clique that backed him. Quote, Consider the fascinating perspective of the recently deceased Boris Berevovsky, once the most powerful of the Russian oligarchs and the puppet master behind President Boris Yeltsin during the late 1990s. After looting billions in national wealth and elevating Vladimir Putin to the presidency, he overreached himself and eventually went into exile. According to the New York Times, he had planned to transform Russia into a fake two-party state, one social democratic and one neoconservative in which heated public battles would be fought on divisive, symbolic issues, while behind the scenes, both parties would actually be controlled by the same ruling elites, with the citizenry thus permanently divided and popular disaffection safely channeled into meaningless dead ends Russia's rulers could maintain unlimited wealth and power for themselves with little threat to their reign. Given America's history over the last couple of decades, perhaps we can guess where Borovsky got his idea for such a clever political scheme. Go and reread that quote, because you are watching the United States writ large in that quote. It's all f***ing staged bullshit. And if they haven't staged it themselves, they're going to use it to the hilt. You know, history is always harsh and truthful. If things get bad, then history will be brutal to those who knew and said nothing, while placating their sad conscience with silly excuses that they are being tactical and their online audience is not ready for the truth. It's highly likely with data analytics, they'll just take us to the brink, but never quite over it. So I guess their networks will be safe, but who knows? I'd like you to uh, go back in history to a time period 1939 to 1945, because that is the exact thing that could happen in the great game of chess going on on the Eurasian continent right now. We need a truth unfettered and unsullied by lizard theories and UFOs and racial supremacist rhetoric and the omission of the centrality of bankers and their operational planning bunker, their wolf's lair, Israel. People are watching and it's time for the full truth in all its clear, historically based glory free from theatre, and above all, bone tosses. Many of the little pretend online social media wannabe journalistic dissidents are altering their rhetoric and general direction, as more and more people wake up to the fake news and the fake alt news. Don't fall for it. 
A core group of people have been harassing them constantly and engaging with their audience, and they are feeling the heat. They must know their behavior is noted, recorded, screenshotted, dated, and archived for future reference. There's a lot happening. We'll speak again soon. Try and stay sane. Remember the centrality, particularly in the United States, but it's the world over, of Denology and Clearforce, General Jim Jones, Shadowgate. Remember the LARPers, the crisis actors. Remember the privatization of the Department of Homeland Security. Please watch Video 39, A Family Civil War, for more on that. We've got to have these big issues addressed again and again and again. No more bone tosses, please. And above all, remember F. Scott Fitzgerald. The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in the mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. One should, for example, be able to see that things are hopeless and yet be determined to make them otherwise. This philosophy fitted on to my early adult life when I saw the improbable, the implausible, often the impossible, come true. I have this printed out and put on my wall. In closing, they will always push a broad narrative that the end is near. If it's near, why fight? Please remember F. Scott Fitzgerald and don't stop fighting. Good luck, God bless, and above all, God bless America and the US Constitution. We'll speak again soon. Perhaps you can understand.